Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. I'm here in Lublin in Poland with the wonderful Eva Orłowska. Brilliant because I can't pronounce Eva's surname. And the wonderful Gosia Jelewska. Perfect. And so Eva, can you explain what you do? Yes, I'm a coordinator and senior lecturer. I teach legal English at the Law and Administration Faculty uh, of UMCS, that is the University of Maria Kiris Kłodowska. Mm -hmm. Good. And Gosia? Yes, and I also work as a senior lecturer of English at uh, the same faculty, the Faculty of Law and Administration at Maria Kiris Kłodowska University in Lublin. And I teach legal English, which I'm very fond of. <laughs> and uh, I was very pleased to come here because this year the law faculty is celebrating its 70th uh, anniversary. So there were some celebrations here which were very, very lovely. That's right. And we're going to talk today a little bit about some legends related to the law in, here in Lublin. So we will talk about that now. That's right. That's As right. you can see, you are enjoying a beautiful uh, Indian summer in Poland, so feel free to follow us and listen to the legend. The legend of the Devil's Paw imprint. Many years ago, in 1637, in a village near Lublin lived a widow with three children. They had a house and a fertile land, though it was difficult for a woman to do all the work by herself. Once, a nobleman, who was the owner of the nearby lands, sent his servants to the widow. They announced to the widow that their lord would buy a house and a field with farm buildings. The suggestion could be interesting for the widow, but the lord offered such a small amount of money that it would be impossible to buy even a small house. The widow refused to sell her property. A few days later, he sent his servants to the poor woman again. By that time, the Lord offered even lower price. The widow refused to sell the land again. In a few days, the woman was woken up at night by strange sounds and smoke. Someone burned her house. The horrified widow grabbed her children, a box of documents and money, and jumped out of the window. The house, with all their property, was burned down to the ground. The poor widow brought a suit to the municipality. The judge, who was bribed by the Lord, decided the case not in her favor. Woman reached the Crown Tribunal. It was the highest authority, which operated in Lublin in the 16th and 17th centuries. If someone was unhappy with the decision of the municipal court, he could appeal to the Crown Tribunal. The tribunal began the process of a poor widow with a rich nobleman. The judge, who was involved in the case, made verdict in favor of the Lord and unfairly sentenced the widow. Offended woman bitterly cried that if she was convicted by the devil, the sentence would be more fair. In a minute, unfamiliar judges in scarlet robes appeared on the stairs. They ordered to open the meeting room and then sat around the table and began to examine the case again. One of them acted as defense counsel of accused widow. A scared clerk noticed that sharp features and eyes of judges have something diabolical and their very black hair hid their horns. In fact, they were demons whom God sent to repeat the process. The proceeding began again. Prosecutor favorably described the claims of a magnet. A stream of false words were poured. The judges took counsel. A few minutes later, horrified Clark heard the verdict in favor of the widow. Jesus in the tribunal court cried with bloody tears over human malice, which is worse than satanic, and he turned away his head. The chairman of the devil court, in memory of this appearance, put his hand on the table 
and burnt its imprint on the surface. After approval of the sentence, demons quickly left the tribunal court. The next morning, the news of the night visit to the tribunal quickly spread over the town. Crowds gathered on the market. Unfair judges who rushed to the court broke their legs on the stairs to the tribunal. Seeing it as a manifestation of God's wrath, priests had solemn worship. There was a ceremonial procession during which the miraculous crucifix was transferred to the collegiate chapel. So I hope you enjoyed that and found it useful. On my YouTube channel, you can find another video from my trip from Lublin, where I talk generally about the legal history of the city. And you can find my YouTube channel by searching for Study Legal English on YouTube. When you're there, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification to make sure that you are notified when new episodes, new videos are published. And of course, you can do this as well with the podcast. Just uh, go on your podcast app, click the subscribe or the follow button, and that will make sure that you don't miss any podcast episodes when they are released. Of course, you can also find me on social media to stay up to date. And if you just search for at Legal Englisher, that's Legal English and then ER on the end, you can find me on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. So then you'll stay up to date with all my posts on social media. Before I go, I have a quick question for you. Is there a legend related to the law in your city? Let me know. Send me an email to louise at studylegalenglish.com or, of course, join in the conversation on social media. Just send me a message on social media. Finally, if you are a member of Study Legal English, you can find your member benefits over on the Study Legal English website at studylegalenglish.com. So thank you for listening and see you next time. Bye. Thank you.